Eric Revillis and his wife, the artist and diarist Terza Garwood, moved to Bank House, Castle Headingham, in October 1934. Here are some of his watercolours of the village. Revillius had been commissioned by London Transport to make wood engravings for press ads and booklets. For these he used the area around his new home. The Green Line Coaches Limited was formed in July 1930. London Transport took over the company in 1933 but they kept the Green Line name. It was via the Cohen Press that Revillius was asked to make illustrations for London Transport and the Green Line. They wanted a simple long, thin wood engraving. And this started a series of wood engravings that Revillius would produce for other areas of London transport. Here is the advert from the original newspaper sheet, with the news of the day surrounding it. The typography is spot on with dishing out of information, very simple, no fuss. Starting points, times, fares and return journeys, I wish more timetables were like this today. Revillius was very busy at this point in his life, so it's no surprise to anyone that he was a great recycler of his own work. Wood carts for paid trade work became watercolours for his own exhibitions. These local examples can be found in the paintings and woodcuts of a local mill, who would use the building from every angle. In Revillius's time the building was known locally as Hull's Mill. Built in 1917 it was bought by Hovis who ran it until 1957 and sold it in 1959. Recently, although always considered part of Sybil Headingham, the mill is now part of the parish of Great Maplestead on the other side of the river and is known as Maplestead Mill today. Mechanically it was driven by a water wheel and after the First World War it was converted to a gas-powered turbine engine. With the turbine engine removed you can see the exhaust stack for the engine above the two men coming out of the top of the shack. Here is the design for the print that Revillius made of Hull's Mill. It is a larger wood block for Revillius and may be why he engraved the mill as a triptych style. When living at Brick House with Charlotte and Edward Borden, Terza's uncle made Eric and her a canoe. It may be why Eric put one in the Hovis woodcut here. The paddle can be seen in this painting, the attic room, Brick House by Eric Revillius. The life ring, however, is said to belong to their landlady. Revillius would go on to cut the mill in another block using the same design again, and this time without a trace of the canoe in the Hovis wood engraving, but with a horse grazing in the field. This wood engraving is called Pony by a Mill. It was cut on the same wood block as another illustration for London Transport, Two Cows, printed in 1936. The Country Walks book were by Charles White and printed for London Transport to show people the possibilities of using the train and bus network. Inside they had maps and planned walks showing how to get to the locations and the sites one might see. Here is Eric Revillis's original drawing for the Two Cows woodblock. This pencil design that was wood engraved would also be recycled into another watercolour. You will notice that one of the cows in the wood engraving is the same cow now twice in the watercolour. It is a carbon copy of each painted in a different colour to the other. Using the perspective of the barn door it makes a beautiful painting. Another work that was sparked creatively by Castle Headingham is The Vicarage in Winter, painted in 1935. Terza writes in her diary that Eric's paint had frozen on the brush, and some days later Eric Revillius wrote to Helen Binion that it looked like a Christmas card. This watercolour takes us back to the Green Line illustrations, and in 1936 Revillius used the cottage on the right, but he translated it into his own style for a wood engraving for London Transport. The slates on the roof were translated into thatch. The lane ended with a V-shaped Sussex style. Today we can locate this cottage due to the proximity of the back of the vicarage and the wall Eric Revillius engraved. If you go to the Potteries, Castle Headingham, you can walk up a small footpath, up a tiny hill and stand in the exact same place that Revillius painted the watercolour and engraved this woodcut for. The style has also appeared in another Revillius work for the Kynock Press Notebook in 1933. Called Block 121, you can see the original block here with an impression of it. Another design is a suburban home, with a man in a top hat with an umbrella standing in front of a doorway. This house turns out to be the old vicarage in Castle Headingham too. The same vicarage is in Vicarage in Winter, but from the front. The steps, the ionic columns at the door, and the window above all say so. With the two swans wood cut, we can see a watercolour followed. Like with two cows, the poses of the swans are the same as in the woodcut, 
but they have been rearranged for the watercolour. The Shepherd is one of the most lively wood engravings that Revillius made for London Transport. The sheep and their ears, with the hillside up to the house, are all pleasing, and the technicality of the half-tone shading are some of his best. You may have also noticed that as another recycled work, it also appeared in a very similar view of the Country Life cookbook. Here is the block for tea in the garden. It is a rather abstract design, but it was the start of commuter lifestyle as London was building a new wave of suburbia. You can imagine the print being used on slogans like Home in time for tea, or Enjoy the garden, or 20 minutes from bus to city. Here you can see a sketch design for a teapot using the previous woodblock. When produced for China, Revillis' designs were printed in black and white. Enamels were then washed over the top of them to give them a sense of colour. You'll notice that the woodblock has been translated into a simpler design. The first piece of china to come out with this design on was the jam pot here. The design was advertised in 1939 as being available, and also in breakfast and coffee sets. The war prevented the production of these to any great extent, 